going on guys it is crisis diamago here coming at you live and in person and in this video we're going to be discussing sony's e3 conference and whether or not they won e3 away from microsoft because let's face it nintendo consoles don't count anymore but microsoft had their convention earlier in the day sony did theirs last night and I'm gonna say why I think Sony kind of won, but if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and you'd like to keep up to date with all kinds of awesome gaming content. Now, like I said, Microsoft did their convention earlier in the day. Halo 5, Fallout 4, all kinds of interesting things, but not really. It was a very boring conference in my opinion. It was a very boring show overall. The only cool thing really was the HoloLens. But you have to have one of those in order to see what you were seeing. If you didn't, don't have one of those, you can just see somebody staring at a table and being like, I wonder what's wrong with this person. So it's cool, but the real world applications of it, how many people are really going to go out and buy one? How many people are going to be able to afford to buy one? Because these things are going to be freaking expensive. I just, I don't really see it taking off right away. Maybe further on down the line, eh possibly but other than that i really don't think so and the backwards compatibility a lot of people really are excited about that but the thing that irritated me about microsoft is that they kept saying 1080p 60 frames per second people listen to me real close real clear the xbox one cannot i repeat cannot put out 1080p 60 frames per second 900p 30 frames per second that's what it runs that's it. It cannot do native 1080p. It just can not. So Microsoft is basically lying to all their fanboys saying, oh, we can get 1080p 60 for... No, you can't. Just stop it. Just stop it. But that's enough about Microsoft. Let's talk about Sony and the kick-assery that they showed in their conference. Now, I'm not going to go through every single game they had because that would be like a 45-minute video. But I'm going to go through some of the ones that look like they kind of interested me and talk a little bit about them. The first one is The Last Guardian, and this is the very first one. It's pretty much going to go in order because uh, I have them all written down here. But The Last Guardian, it was the one that had like the giant bird dog looking thing in it. And it looked like an extremely cool puzzle solving video game. If you guys are into puzzle solving games like uh, Portal and games like that where you have to solve different problems and you really have to use your mind and think. This looks cool. I mean, the giant bird dog thing just looks amazing. The, this game looks gorgeous on the PS4. And I'm not a big problem puzzle game guy, but I may go out and buy this one just because it looks that cool. I They didn't really show too much other than just that opening little sequence, but again, it looks really, really cool. Here's one that I'm excited about, though. Horizon Zero Dawn. If you guys didn't check this one out, this was the second one. It's a brand new uh, franchise, and it looks gorgeous. I mean, absolutely beautiful. When you're when the girl is stalking through the weeds, you can actually see them move. The foliage and everything, it just looks amazing. The gameplay looks super fluid, and that is definitely something that I look for in a game is fluid movement, fluid gameplay. And this looks awesome. It is third person, which I'm not a huge third person guy. That being said, I do have GTA in the background right now. But I'm not a huge third person guy, but this game looks awesome. And it's definitely a third person game that I could see myself picking up because it has robot dinosaurs in it. What the hell? She's taking on a robot T-Rex. She shoots the thing in the dick with the electric arrow. Like, come on. That, it just, it looks amazing. And you get to play as a strong female lead, which I think we definitely need more of in video games today. And that was, it was really cool. I just think it was really, really awesome. Now, the next game we're going to be talking about is Hitman. Holy fucking shit. I love Hitman. This game, oh, they did an extended trailer a little bit further on after the conference like right after their conference ended if you guys were watching on youtube or twitch which <laughs> twitch is failing go youtube uh gaming but um if you guys saw that then you got to see a little bit of an extended trailer this game looks sick i'm a huge hitman guy they said that this is going to take place after absolution so this is even further on down the line this isn't a prequel or anything like that this is a pure sequel to absolution which good on you because this one looks awesome i cannot freaking wait some of the uh bonuses there's going to be an exclusive beta and contracts for the ps4 
if you guys pre-order this game. Now, a lot of people are against pre-ordering. I understand that. Go to GameStop. Put $5 down on the freaking game. You don't have to pay it all at once. You get to play your beta. If you like it, you can pay for the rest of it whenever you go to pick it up or pay for it then and there. It, you know, it is what it is. But you can't say that you didn't have a chance to play the beta if you're on PS4. Which seemed to be the case for a lot of games. We're going to get into that here. Um, the next one we're going to be talking about is Street Fighter V. A lot of people love fighting games. I'm a huge Mortal Kombat guy. I also kind of like Street Fighter. I mean, it's different. It's basically Mortal Kombat with different characters. But Street Fighter V, a lot of people really like that. And this is a console exclusive. You're only going to be able to get this on PC and PS4. So if you're an Xbox One fan, sorry about your luck. No Street Fighter V for you. Uh, no Man's Sky. That's the next one we're going to be talking about. This game is fucking huge. Fucking huge. That's all I can say about it. This game just, it looks, it's like Star Wars on freaking, or not Star Wars, it, more like Mass Effect. It's like Mass Effect on steroids. This dude zoomed out and showed the galaxy and went to a random planet. And you can just, you can just do it. There's so many stars in the, in the, in the game and every single one of them you can go to. That is mind blowing. When I saw the graphics weren't that great, they kind of had like a comic-ish, uh, cartoony, not really cartoony, but not quite Borderlands feeling, but they were kind of like comic-ish. But Jesus Christ, the amount of shit you're going to be able to do in this game blew my freaking mind, and I was sitting there watching it like, oh my god, this is going to, this is going to be amazing. And it's probably a game that I'm definitely going to pick up. The next one we're going to be talking about is a game called Dreams. Now, a lot of people, myself included, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, eh. But then I watched it again, and, well, I continue to watch it and watch it again, and it's incredible. If you're an artistic type of person, if you're an animator, if you're the type of person who wants to get started on YouTube, but you don't really know what to do, this is going to be the game for you. If you can be artistic, if you can animate, if you can do all these types of things, this is going to be the game for you. It's basically a game of animating. Could you imagine how cool this would be to see somebody make a series on YouTube about this? They had polar bears sliding down the snow and shit. A uh, street chase with hover bikes and everything. Mind-boggling. Just absolutely mind-boggling what you're going to be able to do in this game. If you can dream it, it is possible in this game. That's kind of like their tagline here. And by God, it sure as hell looks that way. And I may have to pick this one up as well. Because... Man, I'm going to be poor. But the next one we're going to be talking about is not a game that I'm personally going to be looking into, but it's a game that a lot of people really like, and it's uh, Destiny the Taken King, which I'm assuming is a new DLC that's coming out. It looks cool. Destiny looks gorgeous and everything. But it's not a huge Destiny guy. I'm not a big fan of the grind it out and, you know, go after all this nonsense. No, I'm not all about that life. But it looks good. I mean, when, when I say it looks good, I mean it looks gorgeous. And Destiny people, if you enjoy Destiny the way that, you know, you're enjoying it right now, you'll probably enjoy this as well. The next game we're going to be talking about is Assassin's Seed's... <laughs> Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Seed, Jesus Christ. Syndicate. And I have mixed feelings about this one. It looked cool. It really did look cool. But let's not forget Unity, people. Let's not forget the clusterfuck that Unity was and still is. Um, it's really cool. You get to play as Evie or her brother. Uh, you get to have a cane sword and throwing knives. And if you play on the PS4, you get bonus missions, kind of like how you always have. They're called the Dreadful Crimes, which is cool. I mean, it's different. But again, let's not forget Unity, people. Uh, the next one we're going to be talking about is two Final Fantasy games. First, World of Final Fantasy, which I've dubbed Chibi Final Fantasy, because that's kind of what it reminds me of. Uh, I'm not a huge Final Fantasy guy, I never really got into the RPG type gaming and things like that. But if you're a Final Fantasy fan, I'm sure you'll probably love it. The one that a lot of people are excited about though is Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4. Looks incredible, looks absolutely gorgeous, and again, if you guys are Final Fantasy fans, this is really going to blow your mind. A lot of people in the audience were like freaking out whenever they showed this. And again, not a huge Final Fantasy guy, but it looks good. It, the looks, the, the 1080p was completely blowing out Microsoft's 900p nonsense whenever they were doing all their stuff. So yeah, just another reason why Microsoft 
kind of lost E3. Um, now a game that comes out in about a week, a game that I'm extremely excited about, Arkham Knight. The first mature rated Batman game just looks incredible. It absolutely looks stunning and gorgeous and beautiful and whatever you want to call it. And it's awesome. You get all kinds of special things. If you play on PS4, you get the Scarecrow uh, Nightmare Missions. And if you pre-order it, I think you get the Red Hood DLC from GameStop. Um, but again, if you're against pre-ordering, that's fine. I'm just saying that it is what it is. But PS4 exclusive, it, it's going to look kick-ass. Um, the next one we're going to be talking about isn't really a game, but it's Project Morpheus. It's basically their version of Oculus Rift. It's their virtual reality thing. And they're talking about virtual reality esports. This is cool. This is this is something to get excited about in the esports realm. Because esports now, you just kind of look at a screen and you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Virtual reality esports would be absolutely incredible. I think it would be something that a lot more people would get into. It would be something that a lot more people watch. The only problem is, again, how much is it going to cost? You know, and the guy at Sony said, this isn't necessary. You're not going to need this to play, but it does enhance your gameplay. I guess they're going to have upwards of like 100 games for this whenever it drops, which is just mind-blowing how you're going to have that. But it's cool. Virtual reality esports seems like something that uh, could really, really be cool. Something they touched on was the PS View, which is their television service. Um, they're going to be offering a la carte options, which are going to be available to everybody, which means you can subscribe to certain channels without having a basically giant cable bill, where say you're paying $100 a month, but you only really watch three channels, you're going to be able to buy the three channels. Their full service is only in Philadelphia, New York, Detroit, Sacramento, and Los Angeles. Um, but anybody's going to be able to get these a la carte channels, and if you're a PlayStation Plus member, you get a discount. So that's pretty cool. Now let's talk about the game that I'm the most excited for. Motherfucking Black Ops 3. Coming to Sony when Microsoft did not drop that. I was like, fuck yes! Exclusivity, coming to PS4. MLG moving to PS4. So fucking excited. And, oh my god, it looks fucking incredible. Finally, <laughs> Vondahar and all the guys over there at Treyarch made another Call of Duty that you can be excited about. Even the, the campaign part that they showed kind of looked like your average campaign, kind of boring, but the multiplayer just looked sick. I can't wait to get my hands on the beta, which by the way, dropping in August, and if you are a PlayStation 4 member, guess what? You get it early now. So no longer do the X boners get that exclusivity right. Thank Jesus. It's a new era in the Call of Duty realm, and it's for the Sony ponies. So that is badass. I cannot wait. I already have my beta code and I'm ready to go. Then we're going to talk about Battlefront now. And man, I kind of, whenever EA did this, whenever EA released this, their trailer, I was like, Ugh, it looks good. It really, really, really looks good, but it looks like Battlefield Star Wars. I mean, I kind of expected that being that DICE was making it. I don't know. I'm just disappointed. Do I really want to pay $60 for another reskin of Battlefield? Because that's pretty much what Hardline was. Hardline was pretty much just like a reskin DLC type thing, at least in my opinion. And now we're getting Battlefront. I don't know exactly how I feel about this. I don't know. But I know that I'm probably going to skip off on buying it right away. I might wait for the first price drop, because I'm going to be playing Black Ops 3. But anyway, the last game we're going to be talking about, Uncharted 4. Beautiful looking game, as always, Naughty Dog, coming in and knocking it out of the park. The Thief's End, could this be the last Nathan Drake game? I don't know, but I'm a big Uncharted fan, I really like the games, they, I think they work well, and I think that the gameplay, again, very fluid gameplay always have very pretty graphics 
and yeah it just it looks amazing and I can't wait to get my hands on that one as well but that's gonna wrap it up here guys I know it's a little bit longer than my usual videos but it is an overall review of Sony's E3 conference so if you guys did enjoy this video make sure you hit that like button let me know what you guys think about E3 down there in the comment section below do you guys think Sony knocked it out of the park do you guys think they lost and if you do think they lost why and give actual reasons not just because you're a Microsoft fanboy but again, guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and you'd like to see more content like this. And of course, until next time, guys, I'm Crisis Diamago, and I'll see you when I see you.